Hello everyone, this is Kick by Kick, back with another video. Today we will be talking about Garrus. Garrus is such a strong character with a lot of tools that makes it possible to play the character with any playstyle. He has keep out tools, he has very good neutral, he has very good grab mind game, he has good damage, he has good crushing blows, he literally has everything you can need in a character. This is what makes Garrus so good. Just look at this, this is what it takes for a Garrus player to kill you. Garrus has very good neutral because of his jumps, dash up and mainly his sand trap. His sand trap is an instant hitting low projectile that is not reactable, you literally can't react to this. This means that approaching a Garrus player is a problem already since you can't just walk in. Although this is annoying to deal with, it is perfectly fine to block the sand trap before you take your next step or throw a projectile. Using a character like Kong Lao changes the neutral a little bit because Kong Lao has a dive kick that recovers very fast on whiff. It is fine for a Kong Lao player to occasionally jump and do a dive kick to get closer to Garrus. In some cases, a perfect placed dive kick can lead to a whiff punish on the sand trap. Garrus probably has the best jump in moves in MK11. When playing against a Garrus player, there are some situations that is it is very risky to anti-air. Your character's anti-air tells you if you can anti-air and how you should position your character to anti-air Garrus. 
For Kong Lao, it is best to stay a little bit out of Garrus's jump range and get ready for a down 2. Down 2 is Kong Lao's best anti-air. Be careful if Garrus does a cross up splat because this is usually difficult to anti-air. To anti-air this, it is important to learn how to floors block up 2 against jump ins. Kong Lao can also use a spin to anti-air Garrus on cross up because this move moves Kong Lao forward a little bit. A lot of Garrus players do the cross ups after a down 1 or after a grab or after a knockdown in general. Garrus has a grab loop with both of his grabs. I repeat, both of his grabs. Like he literally has a grab loop with both grabs. So this means a Garrus player can grab you to anywhere and literally not care because you're literally right in front of Garrus every single time he grabs you. As usual, if you want to tackle grab, you want to tack to the side closest to the corner. However, against a lot of high level players, they would grab you to the opposite side, so you have to watch out for that. This is a complete mind game, there's nothing you can do about this. You either tack or make the read. Watch out for jump pins after Garrus hits you with the grab. Depending on your player's pattern, it is better taking 14% than getting crushing blowed or losing all your health in the combo. You have to pick and choose which times you're going to make the read against the grab because you could die for trying to take a grab. Let's talk about Garrus' crushing blows. For the most part, Garrus has a crushing blow in his 4, 2, 2, 1 plus 3 on counter it or on punish. The solution against this is just try to stay safe, don't mash against Garrus. The less you mash against Garrus, the less you're likely to die and the less you get hit by a crushing blow. Like it's 4, 2, 2, 1 plus 3. Garrus has another crushing blow in his sand trap, whereby if a Garrus player whips the sand trap twice and, it does, and you get hit by the sand trap, he, he gets this crushing blow. This is not as scary as it used to be before. Um, the solution to this is just walking carefully. Keep in mind how many times the Garrus player has whiffed the sand trap and just walking carefully. There's really no reason to be um, getting hit by sand trap every single time if you can walk in carefully. And those are the two main Garrus crushing blows that you need to be scared of. The other ones can be done in a combo. New Error and Eternal Garrus both have a command grab, a main command grab, that crushing blows if they are hit from max distance to the corner. So when a Garrus player pushes you a little bit above the mid screen, you have to be ready to make the read on the command grab. In theory, Garrus has no mix up except for his grab, like every other character. But some Garrus players will try to enforce a mix up using his low sand trap because he has some moves that end in overhead or as an overhead follow up. The two moves that a Garrus player can use to enforce the low sand trap mix up is his 1 1 and 2 4 1, and I'm going to show you that in the video. Let's talk about Garrus's variations. In all his variations, he has low sand trap that can be placed anywhere by the Garrus player. In his infinite warden variation, he gets a, the best out of low sand trap because this gives him free Oki as the best damage and literally teleports him to your character's position. This means Garrus can actually go under a lot of projectiles on trade and if your character has a high projectile, you have to be careful because if you trade with Garrus, there is a chance that he will go under the floor and then come out and hit your character. A lot of characters that can punish this low sand trap almost from full screen or full screen but you have to be careful because a Garrus player can place the sand trap to whiff which could trigger you to use your unsafe move in hopes of punishing. In Infinite Warden he has a plus on block fist move. This is the move where you can charge or cancel. This move is not that oppressive because it pushes you back and that means you can jump back, you can back dash, you can flourish block is next option depending on the pattern you've seen the Garrus player do. In New Error and Eternal Garrus, he has a mid command grab that crush him blows when he hits it from max distance to the wall. This command grab takes off his 4 2, down 3, down 1, and standing 2. However, most Garrus players only do it off his 4 2 or do it on a raw read. To avoid this command grab, you will have to jump or shot hop because it's a mid and you can't do anything apart from jumping. The mix up becomes 4 2 1 2 or 4 2 2 or 4 2 command grab. As you might have noticed, this mix up is very strong since the 
command grab is made and you can just dock or just you know option select block it luckily there is an option selected to cover this option but it's quite difficult to do you would have to time your shot hop frame after 402 that it is delayed enough to block 421 but early enough to jump over 4 to command grab or 422. I'm gonna show an example in the video. In new era, Garrus can get cool setups that can lead into plus frame launches. Yeah, you heard me right. Plus frame launches, and this plus frame launches literally makes it possible for him to command grab you right after he does the launcher, which basically means he can try to launch you twice or just try to hit you twice for free. Against this, you just have to guess because you really can't do anything. You have to guess or you have to flawless block his move on, on a read, on reaction. Um, and that is basically all you can do. Um, in his third variation, Eternal Garris, he has a teleport that literally makes him every, able to move around the screen freely and also gives him a pop up if he explodes the clone. So what you want to do is just try to work in, um, try to jump at the right time. And also just try to make the read when a Garris player is coming in and don't get hit. I really can't give any more advice than that. These are the most important details that you need to know about Garrus' variations. Like a lot of characters in this game, Garrus has what you could call his best string. And this string is his 4212 string, which is minus 3 on block, which means his 6 frame down one comes out in 9 frames. And this is insanely fast. So basically, that means he has a 9 frame move immediately after his 4212 move. A lot of Garrus players would flawless block up to you after they do the 4212, which basically stops your counter pokes. If you decide not to counter poke, the Garrus player can do like 4212 into the under um, 4212, or maybe do a forward one. After 4212, the Garrus has, player has the option to jump if he feels like you're not gonna press a button, or maybe press a button late. On the read, some Garrus players would do his choke move in the second variation or they just do the freeze just to stop you from pressing buttons. These are a lot of options and I don't think it is smart thinking about the 4 to one to mind game in this way. Instead, we will think of how our options can beat multiple options at the same time. So basically, we need one stone to kill two birds at the same time. One of the best options against 4 to one to is just to grab the Garrus player right after. If you grab a Garrus player immediately after the 4 2 1 2, you will beat his 6 frame down 1 and also beat his flawless block mind game. As you can see, the grab option alone covers a lot of things. Although Garrus can do 4 2 1 2 into time freeze or choke, it is incredibly unsafe. And this is not a crazy mind game that we should be afraid of because a lot of other characters can do a move and then do an unsafe launcher. Like for example, Kong Lao can do a forward 4 and then do, you know, the spin. However, what you can do is react to seeing that the Garrus player does a move and then you do your own move. What this means is after forward 2-1-2, two, two, there is some recovery for the Garrus player before they can do a down one. So within that recovery frame, you have to notice if the Garrus player does the choke or does the time freeze. If they don't do anything, then you can do your own move if you're not too slow. Another option is just jump after Garrus does a 4 2 1 2. This could be risky because um, the Garrus player could anti air you, but a lot of Garrus players are not ready for this option. So, one of the things you can just do is just to jump, and this just gives you free pressure. And this can also beat some of his options. Let's say he tries to flawless block and uh, he just releases block, and then he just gets hit. The best option I feel against Garrus's 4 2 1 2 is to backdash. This beats three of Garrus's options. You can see an example in the video. And this is one of the best things about Kong Lao. Kong Lao has a 10 frame made in his forward one. And what happens a lot against Garrus players is after they do a forward 2 1 2 against Kong Lao, they try to, like, you know, down one or flurs block or jump away. If I time my back dash correctly and I do a forward 1 3 at the right time, they can't jump, they can't down one, and they can't flurs block. Well, there are more options that you can do, you know, the Garrus player can just do a standing one if he knows I'm going to do that. But he has to make the read and that is a very, very costly read for the Garrus player. So, Kong Lao is a very good option against this by just backdashing and doing the forward one. Another cool option is to occasionally block because most Garrus players just don't grab you after 4 2 one two. Most Garrus players will do 4 2 one two into a down one or 4 2 one two into something stupid and that basically means you get a free counter poke after they do 4 2 1 2 into a move, and you get a free punish if they try to do 4 2 1 2 into choke or freeze. 
So blocking is also a very good option when you literally don't know what to do. Let's say at the end of the match and the Garrus player does 4-2-1-2, you just want to see what else they're going to do. You can literally just block and 90% of the time or if not 100%, they're probably not going to grab you after 4-2-1-2. Although those options are nice, make sure you use them smartly and make your counter procs unpredictable. Once you get predictable, you get downloaded and then you're just dead. You just can't beat the player anymore. If you like the video, do not forget to leave a like, subscribe and comment on which other character you want to see next. I really appreciate everyone for subscribing to the channel. Have a lovely time guys. Bye. That was easy.